Thanks, X. So, when I click it, um, preferences lists loads of choices which are all greyed out, and I'm not sure what I've done wrong or what I should have installed in order to access. Any ideas? Seriously, I'm working to a deadline. So I studied art in the normal way, an undergraduate and masters. Um, wanted to be a painter, wanted to draw, I mean do anything that was, I mean that's how you end up becoming an artist, right, is because you're quite good at drawing maybe. Um, and it was only at the very end that I started to play with moving image stuff. I'd been writing quite a lot about the structure of the moving image. So the illusion versus the reality of what's happening there. So there's the, I guess, structural cinema, really. And then just started uh, making my own sort of experiments using usually stock footage, so things that were from other films, or, and then editing them into something quite uh, punchy and sort of strange. But I wanted to make videos that spoke a lot about the way that they were made so that you never forgot the thing that you were looking at. Um, but that was really, towards the end, it was a last attempt to find something that I could do. Um, and I, it became very natural, it came very naturally to me to, to edit. Um, and also to bring everything together. There's something about making videos that you can, you can write it, you can perform, you can have music, you can have animation, you can really encounter a very holistic way of uh, making work, I think. So that, that appealed hugely, because I could never really decide what I uh, enjoyed a lot, you know. Help me communicate without debasement, darling. Broken windows and empty hallways a pale dead moon and a sky streaked with grey human kindness is overflowing. And I think it's going to rain today. I think I wrote a lot more than I made anything else. Um, often quite critical stuff, but I was also writing a lot of fictional or sort of experimental things. I wouldn't call it poetry, but maybe it was, a, it was kind of poetic, lyrical stuff. Um, I've never really loved art that much. It's just a great place that supports um, in terms of it's the only place I can imagine that I could bring all of these things together on my own uh, in a room <laughs> and and uh, but but yeah writing was always the first thing and, and in a way I, I suppose uh, grammar and syntax and the constitution of meaning through language is something that as a form gets transferred into the videos in a way, uh, the way that they're edited, the way that you're supposed to never really lose yourself to them but, but, but be held in a way where you're constantly aware of how they're made up. And, and I think the way that I write is very much like that as well, is that you're pushed and pulled between very vivid kind of language but also aware of what it's doing, that it's very structured, highly you know, you can see the bones, I suppose. It's true, and I can get back to it with renewed defeat, so long as there's consensus or dissensus or whatever Jesus response, however wrenched. So try talking on a blog with your fucking arms cut off, X.
I, I guess I think of writing and making the videos as quite similar, really. And, and because I do both of them at the computer, they're both, they both have a similar sensation about them. Um, and because of the video, at least for the last six years or so, has been pretty much entirely animated, building up an animation for me is not that different to building up a sentence, building up a, a narrative or something. Um, so they they kind of happen simultaneously. They're not. It's not really that the word is first, and then I make a video that illustrates it or something or realizes it, but that language is the way that I th think. So often an image will come out in the form of language, and that image will become manifest in the in the video. But it goes through so many processes. It's so heavily edited. Uh, um, which again is a, a condition in a way of working on a computer rather than with pen and tipex and you know notebooks and things is that you can delete you can cut and copy and change everything in the blink of an eye and erase it and start again you know there's a very the rhythm is very different and it's very similar to editing video or making animations on the computer I think so they're they're all of all of a similar feeling to me and the same with the sound and the music and the, um, uh, all of that stuff, they kind of come all in one go and then get slowly sort of jumbled up and turned around. You know. This women makes us love. Tis love that makes us sad. This sadness makes us drink, and drinking makes us mad. There's something missing from that world, and from the, the characters that are in that world, there's something missing. That kind of, and the thing that is missing sort of defines it. And in various times, I think that the thing that is missing is life. You know, they are, first and foremost, dead. Um, they're born dead, you know, they're generated from emptiness, in a way. I also think that, that I mean, the big common denominator is, is my time spent with them. I think that, that it would be very different working with a big crew of people. I'd be too ashamed to go to certain places or make decisions that I, if it's just me that I have to answer to, then I can make stranger decisions that I know that are faithful to the way I feel or something, rather than justifiable. <laughs> so they are uh, profoundly obscure, even to me, what happens in them, why certain things happen, but I know the feeling that I want. I mean, most of them, are, for me, are defined by a relationship to the emotional sensation that's in there, you know? And mostly that's kind of melancholy. And I don't really know how to make work that doesn't first deal with loss or speak of loss. Because I, I guess I feel like loss or insufficiency and inability and failure, th those are the, and negation generally are the absolute bedrock of making things, which sounds um, perverse because obviously you generate something, you create something out of nothing, but but actually what it takes away, representation, I feel like it's sort of defined by a, uh, an absence. What's interesting to me about melancholy as opposed to, say, depression or mourning, and this is kind of semantic difference, um, melancholy in the psychoanalytic mode understood as the loss of something that you don't know what you lost. So in a way, for you to ask that question, I can't answer because I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's lost. And that's kind of the condition of that feeling is that something is lost um, and I don't know what that is. And the work doesn't know what that is and the characters don't know what that is. But that, that doesn't stop the fact that that loss is felt. Um, so it's symptomatic, but the thing that it's a symptom of is irretrievable somehow. So all you're left with is to 
deal with somehow and confront or change, modify that feeling of loss. But you cannot necessarily change the thing that is gone, I think. It's interesting because in a way, you're right, you could make anything. So why choose to make really mundane, sad, little <laughs> chamber dramas? Um, and I don't really know, again, I do know that the way that, say, computer-generated animation works and the technology functions ideologically is to, to fulfill dreams in a way. It's like anything you like, you know, escapist stuff. But to me, part of the kind of um, rebellion of using this, all of this stuff only to make a picture of a man crying or something is to reaffirm my agency in the face of this thing. So I don't obey the desires of the technology or of the culture or of anything, but I make something that is faithful to me and not to what my dreams are supposed to be or what is, what is a healthy uh, sort of desire or what, you know, if I could just be happy or something, you know, and surely everything is in place to be happy. But it's my, uh, my demonstrable sovereignty. My, it's up to me to choose to not go with that, but to speak of something that I do know. Because I think the kind of blockbuster dream or whatever of a kind of mainstream fantasy, um, I'm not sure whose fantasy that really is. I'm not sure it's not something that is forced upon us in certain ways. And the last thing I want to do is to entertain the idea of um, telling people what to imagine, but rather um, maybe that you return to the possibility of imagining something for yourself by encountering a representation of something that is uh, deeply normal. It kind of frees that in a way, or at least that's my optimistic view of it, is that maybe I can model certain emotional situations that I find quite difficult to encounter outside of that um, for the sake of some sort of experience for the viewer, I suppose. I, I don't really know what the role of artist is. Um, uh, I'm not sure. What I uh, could say is that I think studying art and spending a lot of time with art really affords us perspective that is, I think, really healthy. I think the kind of levels of critical engagement that are entertained within, say, contemporary art, art in general, is incredibly useful for not being simplistic about anything, but being overly engaged, overly complicated, but in a way that I think for a lot of people is probably ridiculous. But I think maybe as a role, it's a really useful one, is to kind of look at something that is apparently straightforward and to turn it over and think about it in a very different way and represent it, maybe. You know, because everything comes from the real world and then I do whatever to it and then give it back. But my mediation, I can be a kind of um, uh, a version of what's possible when, you, when someone interprets things, interprets the world, and hopefully encourage others to do similarly. But I don't, I don't really consider it that there is some sort of ethical or moral responsibility to anything. I mean, I, I could make really horrible stuff and that would be okay, I think people do, or really lovely, just light, nice stuff. Um, but I think maybe, maybe the responsibility, if anything, is to kind of um, be thoughtful and sort of true to some personal sensation of what you can do, you know? But seen overall, is art a mirror of our time? Because if you go back in yeah. the history it's of It's the art. Ruskin thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's important to think of a mirror not like a mirror in that sense, but as a really, as a lie. A mirror isn't true, so it's not... Maybe it's true to say art is a mirror of the culture or something within which we can glimpse our, you know, etc. But I think that that image that you encounter should be, <laughs> should be really carefully thought through 
and carefully... I mean, when I look in the mirror, I mean, literally, I don't see me, you know, you, you see some horrible projection that you have... It's narcissistic. So if maybe... Certainly a lot of the work I make is deeply engaged in narcissism and therefore is engaged with reflection and reflexivity and making work that thinks about itself too much, maybe. But I, I would hesitate to think that you can learn anything from art like that, like uh, that it would teach us how to think of ourselves in some way. Anything, anything more than, than the, the specific specificity of each and every work and each artist and their desires and things. Uh, I don't think, don't think so. <laughs>